Yes. The demons now, hmm? the demons operating now in Nigeria were not anticipated by great men. What they trained ministers to be, huh? and they will be totally helpless in the days to come. Watch and see. Elijah knew how to set the stones in order. Elijah, he knew how to build the altar of God that has fallen. Some strange prophets have lived in times of old in this land. Strange prophets. You might think that the strength of Itahosa is the message he preached. You, you don't understand. You might think that the strength of the apostle of, of CAC, yeah, I will tell you when to increase the volume. You might think it was in his prophecy. No, his strength was in his prayer. In the covenants that he made with God. There were places on equity hills where that man stamped his feet and his feet entered into the rocks. Yes, while he was praying, yes, he's there. So that is to give you an idea of the spiritual energy with which he was transacting. He was not praying for a Toyota Matrix vehicle. Those were the men that caught the covenants upon with this nation is standing. They were the ones that raised the national altar. But people go to Bible school and come out of Bible school without understanding how the rules of the national altar, the rules and regulation of that altar, to bring rain in a time of drought. Now, the very heart of our nationhood is under attack. You must have discovered that Khan doesn't have a voice. If, okay. All of those things are indication of the fact that the altar of God is falling. Meanwhile, in the days of these men, they will speak a ruthless military president. Not, not democratic. Ruthless military presidents fear death. A carnal person would think that their strength was in the message they preached. The same president that is on the throne now, when he was a military president, he was more brutal, younger, more terrible, more wicked. He was the one that said there should be no open air Christian meeting. Idahosa went to Ibadan and declared crusade and called Raham Bonke. That was the first time Raham Bonke preached to one million people in his life. That was why when, when Bonke was to pass the thought, he didn't go to, to, to Germany. He came back to the land where his friend gave him the largest altar that he ever stood to evangelize. You saw how he was shaking on, on the altar in Lagos. Every evangelist, almost every evangelist that you know in the world came for that evening. That is coming to pass the torch was to give us a sign that our altar has not totally died. But the point is this. We don't have men like Elijah that know how to repair the altar of God. That is point. I challenge you to go back into the place, the secret place. What you are running with will not last for five years. I, I assure you. What you have is good. It might earn you a car, a vehicle. But if you are talking about liberating your people, he set up the altar, set up the coordinates. It was at the time of the evening oblation. He understands the activity that happens in heaven that time, in the parallel world. And it was a link from that parallel world to this physical world. Oh. After setting up the altar, I said,
God, let it be known that I did these things according to your word, according to your instruction. Let it also be known unto these people that I am your prophet. When he mentioned that of transpire came down from heaven. If there was any preacher that was so exalted in scripture, it was Elijah. I wonder what garments he wore that day. He shook an entire nation. When that fire came, the altar of darkness fell alongside. He slew single heartedly 450 prophets of Baal. It was as if Jezebel went, went, traveled out of town when it happened. And before she came back, a new old time was speaking in the land. Nobody heard her voice anymore. It happened just in the weekend. She traveled for a diplomatic mission. Only to come back and discover that the land was smelling a new smell. Why? Because one man called Elijah had come out of the cave. That was a man whose father's name was never mentioned, whose mother's name was not recorded in scripture. Even the name of his village was not mentioned. He was called Elijah the Tishbite. I went to study to find out what is the meaning of Tishbite. I saw it was not the place, the name of a place. I saw that Tishbite means messenger. The only way he was known but was by the message that he preached. Tishbite. They could not trace him to his father, his village. They did not know which woman incubated him for nine months. It was not on record. The only thing by which he was known was what? The message. Fire the message. And those messages were indications that something fiery in the spirit realm was using him as a conduit pipe for expression. Elijah, the dish 